A quick scan of plausible suspects in the Burger case seems to present a complex maze of possibilities. But as in any investigation of a crime of this magnitude, the process is greatly simplified by asking three basic questions. The first has to do with motive and gain. Why was Ninoy killed? And who stood to benefit most from his death? The second question pertains to the practical ability to commit the crime. Who had the means and best opportunity to carry out the assassination? And the third question springs from the obvious attempts to conceal the true nature of the crime. Who had the power to cover up what actually happened at the tarmac on August 21, 1983? The question of motive and gain narrows the field of plausible suspects to a handful. On top of the list would be Ferdinand Marcos himself. After all, he had been the most powerful man in the Philippines for close to 20 years and had accumulated hidden wealth estimated conservatively at 5 to 10 billion US dollars. Next on the list would be his wife Imelda and the Romualdas family who needed to preserve the fortune they gained from the newspaper, power distribution, container terminal and gambling industries. Both Marcoses commanded the loyalty of General Ver, who himself accumulated considerable assets in the United States out of his gains from, among others, the illicit operations of the so-called Binondo Central Bank. Among the key cronies, by far the most powerful was Danding Cojuanco, who controlled the lucrative coconut monopoly and San Miguel Corporation, the most coveted Philippine company. According to Ricardo Manapat, the value of Cojuanco's assets at one point reached one-fourth of the Philippines' GMP. Wala akong inutang sa labas ng bansang ito na ginarantihan ng pamahalaan ito. As the most trusted crony, Danding was reportedly made part of the executive committee designated to take over the country upon Marcos's death. Wala akong kontrata sa gobyerno na masama para sa ating mga kababayan. Kowanko also held the rank of reserve colonel in the Philippine Air Force, mother unit of the Aviation Security Command or AVSECOM, which was assigned to secure Ninoy upon his arrival. At ang uh, nahirapan ay ating taong bayan. He reputedly had a private army trained by the Israeli military as well as close ties with several high-ranking Philippine military officers. For a long while, Kowanko ruled the Coconut Empire in tandem with Defense Minister Juan Ponce Enrile, who had his own interests in the lumber and wood industry, among others. Enrile was gradually eased out of the coconut monopoly, especially after the creation of the United Coconut Planters Bank in 1982. He was similarly marginalized from military power bases, with General De reporting directly to Marcos. Because orders would be given straight from General Ver to the field units by passing the traditional chain of command in his capacity as a chief of staff of the armed forces and uh, also commander of the regional unified commands. And since he was based in Malacanang, sitting beside the president as a presidential security group or security command, commander, uh, even the departments or ministries were being bypassed. So uh, you can see the uh, gathering of uh, the levers of power in the hands of one uh, general officer. Examining the means and the opportunity to commit a crime compels us to revisit the forensic evidence and the scene of the assassination. Was it even remotely possible for a lone hitman hired by the communists to have shot Ninoy at the airport tarmac as Marcos and the military claimed? Based on the evidence, this scenario does not seem plausible. An immediately observable fact was the presence of more than a thousand soldiers at the Manila International Airport on August 21, 1983. It was evident 
that the military was prepared for Ninoy's homecoming. In fact, the armed forces had a detailed operational plan, ostensibly to protect the former senator. Called Oplan Balikbayan, it was conceived based on a letter sent by former Senator Salvador Laurel to then General Fidel Ramos. It was AVSICOM Chief General Luther Custodio who prepared Oplan Balikbayan upon the instructions of General Vare. Oplan Balikbayan had four implementing plans that covered all aspects of Ninoy's arrival. Foremost among these was Implan Alalay, which designated a boarding party composed of Lieutenant Jesus Castro, Sergeant Arnulfo de Mesa, Sergeant Claro Lat, Constable Mario Lazaga, and Constable Rogelio Moreno. Their task supposedly was to fetch Senator Aquino from the plane cabin and to turn him over to Captain Felipe Valerio who would take Ninoy to Fort Bonifacio on board an AVSICOM van. So Oplan Balikbayan was in fact a protective plan? Supposed to be a protective plan. Unfortunately, it was not to be. And if there were no intention to, to, to kill Ninoy, 1,000 1, men could have prevented the assassination. Plan Alpha called for the boarding party exiting with Senator Aquino through the tube to a remote holding room and on to the van. However, upon last minute instructions from General Custodio, what was carried out was Plan Bravo, which called for exiting through the bridge stairs to the AVSICOM van. The whole scene had been carefully sanitized and orchestrated to obstruct public view of what was to transpire at the bridge stairway. But the plotters did not reckon that a handful of courageous eyewitnesses would surface just the same. The most celebrated of these eyewitnesses was the so-called crying lady, Rebecca Quijano. Maraming reporters na mga sumalubong Tinatanong nila ako na bakit daw ako umiiyak. Sinabi ko sa kanila na pinatay nila si Ninoy, bakit hindi kayo umiiyak? Nung bumaba na, nagbukas ng pintuan, may pumasok na tatlong sundalo na sabi niya, Senator, pinaiim, parang something pinaiimbita. Nung tumayo siya, nagsunodan ngayon lang yung mga reporters. So yung ginawa ko, ginawa ko yung camera ko. Sumunod din ako para mag-pretend na, na reporter, para makasama nga ako. So yung pagdating namin doon sa may pintuan ng, ng airplane, bigla kaming, yung mga nakabarong, bigla kaming hinarang. So when they close the door, tumakbo ako doon sa first class sa right side yung sa may window so doon doon ay doon ko I had a may chance ako nakita ko yung yung hamdanan doon going to the pharma ano yung nakita mo? Silip mo doon sa bintana? Noong pamaba na si Nino ay kasama yung tatong sundalo pamaba na ang mga few steps hanggang tarmac yun naman yung nakita kong binaril siya nung sa likod niya na I guess ang pangalan niya is Moreno. Quijano's testimony was corroborated by a number of airport personnel who witnessed the murder from different vantage points. Ramon Balang, a ground engineer of Philippine Airlines, had just completed his visual check of the China Airlines plane. On his way to a concrete post to get his worksheet, he noticed people going down the bridge stairs. He then heard a shot, looked toward the stairs, and saw Senator Aquino's body falling toward the tarmac. At almost the same instant, he noticed a man in blue at the rear of the van being surrounded by about three or four men in navy blue coveralls. 
He was smiling and talking animatedly with the soldiers. The man in blue fell on his back after a burst of gunfire. With the soldiers aiming their guns in all directions, Balang hurriedly ran for cover. Another PAL employee, Jesse Barcelona, was tasked with servicing the equipment of incoming planes. Upon reaching an area between Bay 9 and Bay 5 to get a towing tractor, he recognized Colonel Rolando Abadilla, a known Marcos henchman, talking with a man clad in a light blue PAL shirt and maong pants. 